What's up YouTube? This is Lizard's A21 here, and today I'm going to show you how to keyframe in Final Cut Pro 10. So this will be the fourth tutorial in the Final Cut Pro 10 playlist, and this tutorial will show you how to keyframe. Now if you're familiar with previous versions of Final Cut, you will know that keyframing means moving around graphics on the screen in a certain set pattern. So I find that keyframing is a bit more tedious in Final Cut Pro 10 rather than in Final Cut Pro 7. And in this video, I'll show you some of the reasons why it is, as well as I'll show you the basics of keyframing in Final Cut Pro. So let's get started. I've, I'm going to keyframe some te text here, and I've already overlaid that. And I've just named the text something because I haven't really thought of anything to keyframe. So I've got some footage here of um, a shot of a cracked iPod. And it's supposed to be a phone from my short film. They've got some nice shallow depth of field going on here. But what I want to do is move this text around, just for this example. So you see here, I've actually zoomed out of the viewer window, or the canvas window, I should say, to 25%. That way, I have enough room to move around this sort of wireframe. In order to get the wireframe, press this button here, or you could press it here within the transform tool. That button is pretty much your wireframe, as I already mentioned before similar to the way it was in Final Cut Pro 7. So let's get started. So the first thing you want to keyframe is we want to move this text from here up to the upper thirds. So the first thing we got to do is make sure your video tab is opened within your inspector and you're going to go down to your transfer tool, transform tool. Now this is one of the reasons why keyframing is a bit more tedious. In Final Cut Pro 7, you just press the keyframe button and you're good to go to move things around. But in this, if I want to make a keyframe for the position, as well as the scale, as well as the um, anchor point, I would have to set a keyframe for each. And that's kind of a pain. So moving along, what I'm going to do is add a keyframe for the position, as well as for the rotation, as well as for the scale. So now I've got a keyframe for each. Now what we're going to do is move the playhead. I'm going to move it to about one second. I'm just going to have a one second move effect. You could do that by pressing the shift and then the right arrow, on, right arrow on the keyboard. And now what we're going to do is add another keyframe for each. So one, two, and then three. And then we're going to move this up to here. Just like that. So now you will see that because you're in the wireframe mode, as I call it, you will see your movement from there to here, pretty simple. But what I also want to do is make it rotate one full revolution. So I'm gonna move my rotation 360 degrees or negative 360. I could also type in that number if you want. So I'm gonna just type in negative 360 then hit enter and there we go. So Final Cut's gonna render that out but what I'm gonna do is just show you what that looks like. So there we go. So that's kind of what we're getting at around here and you can do this for whatever you want. So now that I've got that up here, what I'm going to do is make that stay there for a few frames. So I'm going to go back to my transform tool once I get it to where it is. There it is. We're going to go ahead and click something. And I'm going to move to the previous keyframe, which was there. I'm going to add another keyframe one frame later. One, two, three. And I'm going to leave that for a second. And then add another keyframe. One, two, three. And then next, I'm going to make it move down there. So let's get another second going on here. We're going to add another keyframe. One, two, three. And we're going to move it down here. As well as do another revolution. So let's go ahead and move that to there. There's another negative 360. I can never get it perfect. But you get the point. So now we can go ahead and see what the final project looks like. Look at Ginger's phone. And there we go. So anyway, guys, that's just the basics of keyframing. But for now, that's about it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please remember to favorite, comment, like, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys later.